Look at that. You can see the country rock and the ought night at the same time, right when that sun goes down below the horizon, the show begins. Hey, this is Harry with Mine Operator, and we found somebody inside of our uranium claim prospecting. We'll go see who it is. And wouldn't you know it, it's Dan Hurd. <laughs> Hello, everyone. What are you doing in here? Looking for glowing rocks. I think you're gonna find it. I think I found a few. There's some things blowing around here. Dan's looking for autonite, the secondary mineralization of uranium that comes from pitch blend. Let me turn my light off so you can actually see it. That's more of a calcium glow. I think that might be from a rat. <laughs> oh yeah, you're picking it there up. There we go. Now we got some. That's a nice little light you got there. There that thing's pretty good. With black lights, you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. You really do. If you can get black light that's got a filter to filter out the visible light, it makes all the difference. So now you're basically making a, a UV light now, right? You UV from, only. Yeah. Where the cheap ones send out UV and visible light, and they wash out what you're seeing under UV, Good ones with a filter just send out the UV. Well, if you see a spot you like, that is beauty right there. We can tell you what the mineral content is. Let's get out the XRF. Yeah. Don't forget about this rock right here. This one got you that pretty good you. last time. Okay. Yeah, somebody left an XRF here. I wonder who did that. I was poking around inside the mine uh, looking for glowing rocks. I want to take a whole bunch of samples of the rocks that glow under ultraviolet uh, home with me, but I think it's best to do that in the dark. Just oh, yeah. can't really find many right now in the daylight. So when you come out on these adventures, like what, when you go out and you're enjoying yourself, like what, what do you like to get out of it? Right now, the the relaxation, hanging out with friends, uh, enjoying the sunshine for sure and uh, learning, a lot of learning going on. I had a good chat with the geos up top there. Oh, you did. Uh, about the difference between FASIC and MAFIC rocks, and I learned a lot. I'm all self-taught. The only way I learn is by talking with people or reading books, so it's nice. great to talk with them today. Oh yeah, those guys know a whole bunch of stuff I never even thought of. So um, it's cool to be able to talk to them and then go prospect around and ask them questions. Oh yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, the sun's not quite down yet, so... What do you think? Two hours? Three hours? Yeah, about an hour and 45. Hour and 46 minutes, precisely. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll try that out. What time you got right now? I have no idea. All right, well, the time is now, so we'll figure it out. Well, I got Dan over there checking out one of the uranium prospects, and he's, he's droning around. I'm in another spot close by, and there's a spot I want to test with the XRF. Um, I'm going to test in this area here. Uh, and this is the autonite you can see on the surface of the rock. But I get into this red and oxidized area and there's this darker stuff that I want to test out. I'm going to drill a sample and then I'm going to shoot the rock and I'm going to also shoot the sample with the XRF when I'm done. I think the, the hertz frequency of the screen is going to make, uh, make the recording blink. But the uranium is at 1.8% in this darker material. I don't see any vanadium in there, but mostly iron and uranium. So I'm going to do a couple scans here and then drill enough to get a sample to send in for assay. Try and compare the results. Yeah, so now I'm at about 4,000 parts per million on the uranium. Let's drill some rock.
All right, we got two holes drilled and a nice little bag sampled up of finely divided material from, the, from our rock. So now I'll scan and see what we got. So I went from percentage of uranium to 600 parts per million. So now I got this finely divided sample. It's not concentrated, but I went right into the host rock from where the uranium, uranium was on the outside. You get a lot of other trace minerals in there, uh, but I'm primarily looking for the uranium. A little bit of tungsten, but mostly, uh, Mostly calcium, iron, aluminum, potassium, and then uranium. So looking like we're coming out about 700. Yeah, so six, 700. So we're getting an average. So a finely divided sample is going to be a little more accurate than just reading a hot spot in a rock. So we'll send this one off and see how it compares. Let's go see what Dan's doing. Dan! Looking for rocks! Did you find any yet? Got a couple. Nice. What do you got? Oh, wow. So how does that work? I mean, I've, everybody's explained it to me, and I'm a knuckle dragger, so I, I couldn't explain it. What, what's going on? Well, this special type of flashlight emits an invisible light we call UV light. It's emitted at a wavelength that our eyes can't pick up. But certain minerals, like the uranium here, will absorb the energy from the invisible light and then emit a visible light. And what happens is the electrons of the uranium ore will get excited by the energy from this. They'll jump out an orbit in the molecule and instantly jump back in. And as they lose the energy of jumping back in, they emit a photon, Obi, so which the, we can see. So the light's not just reflecting off it like a, like a flashlight or, or no. the sun. It's, it's... it's being absorbed wow. and then actually emitted. Wow. So that would be phosphorescence or this is fluorescence fluorescence phosphorescence is when it absorbs the light and then you can turn off the uv ah. light and it still emits afterwards we've seen stuff like that out here so that'd be like those little stickers that people put on the wall and they put a light on it and then it stays you know for a little bit and then, yep. then goes out exactly and then bioluminescence is little critters that emit. make a chemical reaction within okay. them okay that will give off light that's red all right, I got it. Now I have to go back and wash this over again and memorize it so I can talk about it intelligently, right? <laughs> Yes, sir. Dan's in the back there looking. And we're checking this out right at the magic hour. This looks spectacular. Dan, you gotta see this. I'm a coming. I'm a coming. As dusk hits, we get the magic starting. Glow-in-the-dark uranium. With the help of a UV light, that is. Hey, Phil. 
Thank you, Harry. This is an amazing experience, even the second time around. Oh yeah, this is amazing, isn't it? I really like that monster light you have, but that little one you have there is pretty good, huh? Yeah. The monster one did a better job of the sort of walk through. Yeah. Because it lit everything. This only lit like one spot. Now, see, throw that guy right where mine is, and you see how much more, wow. It's almost overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, look at the contrast. Put your lips back on. It really kind of makes the, the Hot Night kind of well-defined. That's crazy. What you see? We're finding these rocks out here. You start to see them, the short wave. They're just incredible. Look at that guy. That guy is awesome. It's gonna go in the bag with the others. What else we got over here? Oh yeah. Well, Dan and I are done out here for the night. We're gonna go head back to camp and catch up with Jason and the Geos and, and call it a night. Thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Hey, look at that guy. I wanna when I can take it. Oh yeah, that's super bright. It's dinner time.
Well, it's that time. It's evening, and I'm out here with Dan. Hi, Dan. Hello, everyone. And, and I'm Harry. Her. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> well, it's nighttime almost, right at tw uh, no. I just passed twilight, and I'm out here with Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi, Harry. So we're gonna go check this thing out and see how it looks as the light dwindles. Cool. 